In your classes, you've almost certainly seen sine and cosine. And you probably learned sine and cosine as being something like SOHCAHTOA, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so forth. And that's fine, but if you think about it, it's very hard to think, why would I care for a triangle what the opposite side of it divided by the hypotenuse side of it is? Like, why does this matter? Why would anyone think to care about this in the first place? And the answer is, they wouldn't. We don't care about what the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is and so forth. We use sine, cosine, and tangent for other reasons. So in this video, we'll real quickly and real easily explain why do we care about sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's say I drew a circle on my graph. And let's go ahead and make the circle be radius 1, just to make things nice and easy. You can make the circle as big or small as you want, but why not just make the radius be 1, something simple. So let's say again, I put a point on that circle. Let's go ahead and put it right there. And let's say we did exactly the same thing. I want to know for that point right there, what is the x value going to be and what is the y value going to be? Well, it's not obvious how you're supposed to figure this out. I mean, how much do I scoot over to get there? I don't know. I mean, something less than 1. How much do I scoot up? Well, something less than 1. I'm not really sure what it is. So this is something that people ran into a long time ago because circles are very important in our daily lives. So they want to come up with a way to be able to figure out what is the x and y value. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to draw a triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I'll go ahead and connect the center out to my point here. okay? And that gives me some angle in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and call that angle theta. You can call it whatever you want, but I don't want to use x because we're already using x, so I'll just use theta. Okay, so now I've got this line in the middle. Well, let's go ahead and make this whole thing into a triangle, just because triangles are a bunch of straight lines, and straight lines are much easier to work with than circles. So let's do that. So let's see, I'm going to draw a line straight down here. So if I do that, great, that's our line there. And then we've got the most of the triangle. Let's go ahead and draw a line across. So if I do that, there we go. So let's go ahead and copy that over here. Okay, so we've got our same triangle copied over. Let's try to fill in some stuff about our triangle here. Well, so the black line, that's the hypotenuse, right? Which is just a fancy way of saying the radius of the circle. So we decide the radius is gonna be one. Again, nothing special about one. We just picked a nice simple number. Okay, so what about the other two? Well, this blue line, that is how high the point is. Well, what do we call how high the point is? We call that the y value of the point. So that's the y value. The red is how far over it is. What do we call how far over it is? It's the x value. Okay, so now we're starting to get somewhere, right? We were looking for x and y, and now we've got some lines. Lines are easier to work with. Well, so you learned cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. What is the adjacent side here? It's x. What's the hypotenuse? It's 1. What is x divided by 1? Well, it's x. So there we go. What is x? x is cosine of my angle. You can probably guess what sine is, but let's go ahead and do it right now. So sine, I take the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That also just gives me y. So now I can come in over here and I can fill in my answers. So what is the x value of my point? Well, it's cosine of the angle. What is my y value? It's sine of the angle. So the point is, now I have a way to write down what the x value and y value actually are. They come from cosine and sine. So that is why we care about cosine and sine. Nothing at all to do with opposite and hypotenuse is because it tells us if you put a point on a circle, what is the x value of it and what is the y value of it? Okay, so I still haven't said tangent. Well, tangent is actually pretty straightforward. So let's do tangent as well. So if we keep our same picture here, tangent is I take the opposite side, which is y, divided by the adjacent side, which is x. Okay, so you may look at that and not be entirely sure what that's supposed to give me. Well, okay, let's, let's try to think of it another way. So what is y? y is how much I'm going up or down. What is x? x is how much I'm going over, like left or right. Okay, this looks a little better, right? What's another way to think of up? That's how much I'm rising up. The over is how much I'm running left and right, right? This is rise over run. This is slope. 
So tangent tells me the slope of my line, which again is something that's important, right? It's how the slope of a road, you can't make it too steep, otherwise cars can't drive up it and so forth. So now we see what sine, cosine, and tangent are used for. Hope that makes sense. If you have questions, if there's more things you want me to clarify, please let me know and I'll be sure to get to that. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.